the Logitech MX Master mouse. That's what we're talking about today. Possibly the best mouse in the world, in my opinion. <laughs> and if you're not familiar with it, I'm going to be talking about the mouse. And even if you are using one, I'm going to be talking through the software because there are maybe a couple of features that you may not be aware of. And I'm also going to be telling you about a little accessory that you might want to protect your precious mouse. So this video is for you, if any of the above apply. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec and uh, yes, the Logitech MX Master Series. I've been using the MX series of mice, mouses, whatever you call them, <laughs> for years now, uh, over 10 years, starting with the uh, original Performance MX mouse that they released. Uh, there were several iterations of that and then they changed the name to MX Master and now we're on the MX Master 3. And it's just, in my mind, the best mouse. And I've tried a few others along the way, but uh, always kept this one as my sort of go-to. And uh, I've often had multiple versions of them, uh, one in the office, one at home, one in my uh, bag to carry around. So uh, I am certainly a fan of them. You can say that much. <laughs> so why do I like them so much? Well, it is the build quality, first of all, is uh, really good, really solid. Uh, but then it's the functionality of them as well. There are a lot of things that they can do that you couldn't do with uh, with other mice. There are some other competitors, but I won't mention their names here. <laughs> uh, so let me just show you, first of all, where you can find them. Obviously, I'll leave a link to these in the description. Now, the version that I've got is this one, the MX Master 3 uh, wireless mouse. Uh, it's currently reduced in price from $99 to $92 on Amazon. $93, actually, $92, $96. But there is a another version, which as far as I know, is actually almost identical. And it's currently uh, discounted to $79. And that is this version, which is uh, only five left, though. So uh, <laughs> better hurry to get these bargains. Uh, but yeah, it, the only difference is, is this color here. They, what they say is it is for Mac. But my one works perfectly well with Mac. There is no limitations on it. And it's just that this color here is, they call it space gray. Uh, so uh, wireless MX Master for, Mau uh, for Mac, uh, color is space gray, whereas this one uh, they call it black. But it's actually dark gray, so there's nothing black on this uh, on this mouse except perhaps for the uh, little pads that you get underneath it. But we'll have a look at that after. So it's really just this detailing here is more of a sort of silvery gray color on the uh, on the, the Mac version. But apart from that, it's seventy nine dollars. So all of the other functionality, as far as I know, is exactly the same. So let's come and have a look at the uh, the mouse for a moment and I'll show you why I like it so much. So first of all, uh, this is the mouse. It's got a left and right button, obviously. It's got a scroll wheel that we'll come to because it's got some really nice little functionality on that. Uh, this little button as well relates to the scroll wheel, but I'll uh, come to that as well. Uh, then it's got a side scroll wheel over here. It's got some forward and backward buttons. And there's also a thumb button on this part here where you would normally rest your thumb, but you can just press down here and this is a button as well. It charges over USB-C, so there's a USB-C cable that goes in there. Uh, the battery lasts for months, to be honest with you. I, uh, it's very rare that I get the, mess the little blinking thing that comes up and it will pop up on screen saying the battery needs to be recharged. Uh, it's, it's literally months. So, um, But once you do need to charge it, you just plug the USB cable in and then it leave it on overnight or whatever and it will be fully charged again and then you won't have to worry about it again for another uh, month, uh, another few months. <laughs> also underneath, you've got a... Uh, uh, on off switch as well uh, not that i particularly use that unless i'm traveling and then i can switch it off uh, but then it's got the light sensor underneath here and then also here it's got a little button that you can switch between up to three devices because you can have this paired with three devices and you can switch between them here but there is another even better way to switch between devices but i'll show you that when we have a look at the software um, but yeah it's really nice and comfortable the sort of texture of it is a nice sort of rubbery texture uh, so it's got just enough grip uh, without being uh, <laughs> I was going to say without too much grip, I don't know if that is even possible. It's got a nice feel to it, let's just say that. The uh, the um, the buttons themselves are sort of textured plastic, so the texture feels pretty similar really, but uh, overall it's just got a really, really nice sort of solid weight to it as well and a texture, and it fits nicely in the hand. I don't like those small mouses where you feel like you're just sort of holding them over the top, something like this. <laughs> uh, I like something where you can sort of rest your hand on it and it's uh, it just feels a part of the hand almost when you're, you're using it. And that's what this feels like to me. <laughs> so uh, the mouse itself, the hardware, just really solid. They've always been well built, these uh, myself, and I've had to really... Um, really hammer them to uh, cause any sort of damage to them. Although I have dropped a couple off a table before now. And uh, yeah, depending on how it lands, 
it's uh, that can have some some bad effects sometimes <laughs> but i'll uh, i'll talk about that a little bit later as well let's uh, come and have a look at the software though because that is really uh, you know how much can i say about the mouse itself the the power of it is in the software so i'll come back to my screen sharing and i'll show you the software that comes with it so uh, once again uh, as i often mention with uh, software applications uh, there is usually in the installation process you're going to have to go through that process where it asks for permission to access some of the security and privacy sec uh, uh, sections of your max system preferences so it will prompt you to do that and you just need to go through and grant it access because you are going to be giving it access to uh, control your system at various different levels but that's nothing to worry about if you see that so when you open up the software the logi options software um, this is used to control uh, various different Logitech devices, but I've only got the mouse that I've, I'm using with this at the moment. But other ones would show up there if you had other things. The uh, first page of it, there's three different sections that we'll have a look at. And the first section is uh, the first page. In fact, let me just pull up my... Uh, I haven't launched my Pro Mouse. That is a very schoolboy error, isn't it? Not to have started my Pro Mouse. There we go. Uh, so hopefully you can see that and I can I'll zoom on it. So here you can see the different buttons. You've got this thumb button here. You've got the, uh, the top wheel that I talked about, the scroll wheel and that button. And then you've also got these buttons on the side. So we've got the side scroll wheel and then these, they call them the forward and backward buttons because often you use them for forwards and backwards, like when browsing the internet or things like that. Uh, but the thing that's great about it is that these buttons are, are all programmable and also they are not just programmable but they're programmable by application so you can give uh, custom uh, commands or features to some of these buttons uh, for different applications which is what I do as well so let's have a look at how you can uh, program these so first of all if you hover over a button you'll see that it's sort of uh, highlighted in a little green color the uh, Logitech green <laughs> and so if I hover over this thumb button you can uh, either have a gesture. So with the mouse, you can have gestures where if you hold down a button and then swipe, you know, left, right, or up and down, it can give it a gesture like that. Or you can have a, a keystroke, or you can do things like change the pointer sp speed, uh, minimize a window, mute, or have the max mission control be activated. Uh, so in fact, if I come down and click more, there's uh, also expose where it shows all of your apps on the screen, show your desktop, uh, desktop right or left. So that is if you are using Mac uh, spaces with multiple desktops, you can flick between them as well. Uh, and or you can have a keystroke. Now, I actually have a keystroke when I'm not in any particular application. I have a keystroke set to command N, which is new, which seems a bit of a weird thing. Why would you want a button on your mouse just for a new document? But the reason is when I'm in applications, I've got specific things programmed for this one. But when I'm sort of out of any of my normal apps, then if I click on the desktop and just press this button, it actually opens a new finder window. So because I seem to be always in and out of the finder all the time, I've uh, just mapped this uh, particular thumb button uh, on my uh, thumb wheel here, not thumb wheel, but my thumb pad. <laughs> I've mapped that to be uh, basically open a new finder window. So wherever I'm, I can always just pop open a new finder, uh, finder window. So that is what I've done. I'll come into the gesture button uh, uh, option <laughs> because uh, I've got one of those mapped a little bit later on. So that was this uh, button. Now, if I come onto the uh, thumb wheel, this is where I've got a gesture control. So uh, here, um, I've got it set to uh, gesture control and what that means is if I press the button in the middle then it brings up mission control which opens up all of those uh, all the different apps that, that are open uh, but then uh, if I hold down that button and then swipe uh, left or right it switches between my desktops and then if I swipe up or down so holding down the button and move the mouse up or down I mean then it's either mission control or app expose so that is the way that you use the gestures so you're actually holding down the button and moving the mouse at the same time so in the same way as uh, i've done that you can also then uh, program these other buttons so this horizontal scroll i have for scrolling this is good for um so in premiere pro for example then this one is set to uh, scroll the timeline uh, left and right uh, and zoom in and out for the scroll wheel so there's lots of uh, good things that you can do in different applications for it the forward and backwards I've got that assigned to um, uh, different move spaces or if I'm in a web browser then it's forward and backwards on the pages and so on. Now the uh, the scroll wheel is interesting because it's got something, in fact let me come to the point and scroll uh, menu. 
it's got something called uh, smart shift now the uh, the the wheel itself I sort of got like clicks so when I'm moving the mouse wheel I can feel that there's a distinct click to it as it's uh, moving and that means that if you want to scroll sort of incrementally slowly up through a document or something like that or through the file manager the, the finder rather <laughs> then uh, then having that scroll wheel with those little clicks really helps but if you press this button on the top it actually makes it go freewheeling uh, so it's there's no no clicks to it and it will uh, spin uh, quite freely and because it's got quite a weight to the wheel uh, you can really sort of whiz through documents that way as well and then if you stop it it's uh, uh, put this the, the sort of brake on then it will stop again but this isn't actually a sort of mechanical thing I mean it is a mechanical thing but this button is not a mechanical button it's actually uh, done sort of electronically to sort of toggle this on and off and they've got what's called smart shift and this when it's enabled uh, you can change the uh, sensitivity of that and that means that it will uh, you don't need to have it activated on the button but it will uh, as you flick it more it will automatically release the uh, the sort of ratchet if you like and then flick to being the the sort of more freewheeling flywheel thing so that's great when you want to have that fine adjustment going through web pages for example but then if you just set it spinning then it will whiz down to the the bottom or whatever so uh, that is a really neat little uh, little feature that it's got there and so that is uh, currently enabled um, and then you can also change to uh, manually change it between the free spin and the ratchet and you'll notice if I press the button uh, then that will also uh, change that as well on the uh, the mouse. So you can just do it directly on the mouse here um, as well. So then you've also got this uh, fixed mode is inactive. Uh, so that will only only change when you've uh, disabled that smart shift. But you can do it, as I say, manually by pressing it on this, uh, this little button. The scroll direction. Uh, now, at some point, Mac changed the uh, way that you scroll. I forget how many years ago it was. It was maybe six seven years ago and they went from uh, I can't even think the way that you normally do it so normally you sort of move up like that and the page scrolls down uh, and then you roll it backwards that, like that and the page will scroll up but at some point they flipped it because it seemed more in line with the way you do it on touch or something like that I forget but anyway uh, I just stuck with the original way it's one of those things that if you come to a Mac that has got it the opposite way, it just seems weird, but it might be more logical the way they're doing it now. I'm not sure. But anyway, they call it natural scrolling is the way that it was always used to be done, <laughs> just so that you know. Uh, smooth scrolling as well. So that is, again, sort of scrolling the, uh, the controlling the speed of the scroll, I believe. Uh, but I have that disabled. And then you've got the same as you can change the, the pointer speed. So just as you can do with any mouse, changes the speed that the mouse will move around on the screen. That's a little bit too sensitive for me. So in fact, I couldn't barely even get back to it. So I changed that there. And then you've also got the scrolling speed as well. So that's just the default scrolling speed. Uh, you don't need that too high because you've got that flywheel effect if you want to just spin down to the bottom. And then also the same for the uh, thumb wheel speed. So moving left and right and the thumb wheel direction as well so that's much the same as the uh, scrolling direction so that is some things that you can do with the point and scroll but there's another one which another feature which is uh, really good which i haven't actually been using i have to say but it is what basically apple are introducing in their next os so if your um uh, computer can't do what they're offering which i forget what they're calling it now is it continuity or something like that where you can move your mouse from one computer to the other uh, well this has been able to do that for quite a while now and uh, you just set it up on both computers and then you just move your mouse to the edge of the screen and it moves over onto the other screen and you can have this for up to three computers i think and just as with the mac thing you can uh, the mac uh, os release you can also copy things from one and move them to the other and if you've got the logitech mx keys i think it's called uh, keyboard which is probably what I'll get when I next upgrade my keyboard, although this old one's been fine for me, to be honest, <laughs> uh, then that would also transfer the keyboard over to that. So it's basically replicating what you're going to be able to do with the uh, Mac OS when they eventually uh, release the software. But as I say, that only works with certain Macs, I believe, whereas uh, this will just work with any one where you can actually install this software. So that is the uh, MX mouse software. And as I say, it is my highly recommended mouse and uh, I can't imagine using anything else. There was uh, an occasion where I had to use another mouse for a very brief period of time where, when I left this one at home and had to use another little <laughs> more more 
normal sized mouse and uh, yeah it was very frustrating but there is one more thing that I want to tell you about because as I say I have uh, at some point broken some of these by uh, knocking them flying off a table I don't mean just dropping them a short distance I mean accidentally swiping them off with a bag and it went flying across the room and smashed against the uh, the floor so uh, there's nothing really that can protect about that protect against that uh, in all eventualities but one thing I do do now as well is when I'm traveling is I have got a little case for it because I do want to protect my mouse you know if they're if you're buying a 90 dollar mouse then it's worth giving it a little bit of uh, protection <laughs> when you're on the road and so fortunately they make these really nice uh, hard shell uh, cases which i'll leave a link to and it's got a lot of uh, sort of foam protection in it and it is literally made to measure for this so this fits perfectly you can see it's just sort of matching the shape of the uh, the base in there and this just fits in very nice and snug and uh keeps it nice and tight and just zips close. There is a little uh, sort of handle attachment on there. I don't think I'm ever going to walk down the street with this hanging off my wrist, so I just detach that. <laughs> but the uh, the case itself is, as I say, it's really, uh, really sturdy. It's a strong case anyway, so it's not going to get much deflection. It's pretty uh, pretty hard but then yeah it's just nice and uh, sort of foam padded inside so if you are going to spend the money on the mouse then uh, and you travel a lot which uh, perhaps you haven't been doing of late I don't know but as the world is opening up again perhaps you will be in the future uh, then this is a great way to uh, protect it when you're on the road and uh, that's what I've been doing anyway so there we go that was just my little overview of the Logitech MX Master Mouse because uh, somebody asked me about it the other day and so I thought I'd make a little video to share with you what I was using because I seem to have covered most of the other bits of tech that I've got in my office so uh, there we go that's all for now, but I shall leave a link to uh, some of the other videos that I've done at the end. Uh, but in the meantime, before I go, I know you know what's coming. If you like what you've seen today, <laughs> then do go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and uh, share it with anyone else you know who uh, might find this sort of stuff interesting. And as always, I'll leave a link to anything I've mentioned in the description below. But now it's time for some more great videos and those are coming up on the right hand side and I'll leave a link to all of my tech reviews over on the bottom right there. Have a great day everyone. <laughs>